Hello my friends, in this video I start a new project. As some of you have already noticed, I'm currently working on an All Quiet on the Western Front diorama. I think the story is a very impressive anti-war narrative and so I would like to capture that experience in a diorama, even if that is a very ambitious goal. For this I will use the sets that I have shown here and other resin figures that I have not filmed here yet. But today in this video I will assemble this boxy beast, the Tacom kit of the Saint Chamond, step by step and show how I built the tank, painted it and weathered it subtly. As far as I know, the set is currently no longer in production, which is why only remaining stock can be bought. Compared to the Hobby Boss kit which I also built first and cancelled, the Tarcom kit impresses with better and more accurate details. Nevertheless, not everything is perfect. The Hobby Boss kit for example is much easier, faster and better to build, because especially the fit of the Tarcom kit is not good in some places. As you could see I also bought two resin update kits from the French manufacturer Blast models, which enhanced the model with additional details in a customized storage. This is also an advantage for the kit from Tarcom, since there are no suitable update sets for the Hobby Boss kit. But this is enough about the kit right now. In the following I start building the kit and I will comment on the building process at relevant points, so enjoy! This photo edge part is from the Hobby Boss kit, but I recycled it for this build. The resin of the Blast model's updates is convenient and does not break immediately. Even though you can't glue larger resin parts with styrene glue, it's not a problem with such small parts. For painting and for the final result I will keep the door and the hatches closed, but in the diorama this tower hatch as well as the side door will be shown open, so I will not glue them on. When sanding the putty I have removed a few bolts, which I now glue back onto the model again. This way of removing unnecessary details cannot be recommended. The exhaust hole I have first pre-drilled and then carved larger with a knife. As some have noticed, I try to use only water-based products for the most parts in modeling. Why I do this I've already explained in previous videos. Therefore I also model the armor texture with water-based putty from Vallejo. I dilute it with water and apply it in many thin layers. The drying time can be accelerated with a hair dryer at low temperatures.
As can be seen in this historical photo, there are some bolts in some places on the gun barrel, so I had to add this detail as a bonus. Then I removed a few bolts and drilled holes to simulate bolts that flew out. For this detail I was inspired by Martin Kovac, who also pointed out that this was common on World War I tanks. As you could also see with the machine guns, you can assemble many parts on the model movable. These wheels for the tracks are extremely complex and the design originally came from civil tractors. Coupled with a far too weak engine, there were often problems with it. The armor plates that you have to glue on the back and front fit really badly, 
So sandpaper, putty and a lot of patience is needed at this point. The tracks are very time consuming, since each individual piece requires several parts, all of which have to be cleaned up. But the details are decent. After the tracks were the last part of the assembly, I start the painting with a black primer coat with the one shot primer from Amomic. Especially with the tracks, you must also be careful to paint every spot, so as not to experience a nasty surprise. This is the Kamo scheme I want to paint. It is based on original tank version Teddy. The decals in the painting instructions are from the Hobby Boss kit, because in the Tarkom kit only other versions of the tank are included. To paint the tank in these colors, I used the French AFV color set from AK Interactive, which contains all these colors historically correct. I apply the camus step by step. First I start with the green areas, which I apply very diluted in several layers in a cloudy pattern. Since I was initially concerned about the color opacity in the cloudy pattern, I have applied the colors in the end effect rather more opaque and evenly at the cost of the cloudy variance because I thought that I can also increase the color variance again in later phases with the highlighting of the colors. To protect the green areas I use masking putty which are applied in the shape that these green areas should have in the end. After that I sprayed the rover spray again with black primer, so that the following colors have the same base. Then I was able to spray on the next color, the French brown, which I applied in the same manner. After spraying this color, I stopped that evening with modeling and continued again after a few days. In doing so, I was shocked to discover that the masking party had run due to gravity. However, I didn't think the problem was that serious and the prospect of having to mask everything again didn't excite me, so I just decided to go ahead and mask the brown errors with the putty. But as it turned out later, the problem was serious. When applying the blue, you can see how the puzzle of masking off and spraying on new camo color areas keeps coming together. The last color was a dark yellow. After I applied the last color, I was able to start removing the masking. 
What looked promising at first turned out to be more and more of a disappointment, as large black spots were visible where the putty had flowed down. This shows that if you are lazy, you can't get away with it in model building. Anyway, in the end effect, they had to mask and repair these areas again. After fixing these spots, I started applying highlight tones. For this I mixed the base colors with buff, heavily thinned them and applied them again in a cloudy pattern. This time without masking. A little overspray is not bad here, because the color fields will be divided with back lines. Moreover, it helps to blend the very different camo colors. After I applied highlights for each of the colors, I was able to separate the color patches with black lines. For this I took a very fine brush. Small imperfections here are not bad, but rather strengthen the authenticity of the paint job, since the lines on the original tank were also painted by hand at that time. Then I was able to apply the decals from Hobby Boss, which are very thick and very difficult to apply, even with aggressive decal softener. A layer of glossy varnish underneath would have probably have helped as well. Then I applied the smoke effect. This is a technique I learned from Adam Wilder and it is actually done with Tamiya clear paints. But here I use Vallejo Model Color. This effect gives the model a more dramatic effect by darkening the bottom side walls and parts with a transparent smoke color. Basically the application of the effect can be thought of as similar to color modulation. You want to increase the contrast between different parts, only you don't adjust the base colors but try to darken all the base colors gently with smoke, concentrating mainly on the lower parts of the model. Then I used Amomix shaders to enhance the shadow on each bolt and in gaps of the model. This is the preparation for the pin wash. Before I applied the wash, I have secured the pre-work with a layer of varnish. I used the satin varnish because it gives the model a nice metallic shine. The varnish I used was the Lucky Varnish from Amomig and that is one of the worst products I have ever used. The varnish is way too watery and did not apply well in any way. It resulted in an uneven paint job, so I can't recommend it. Then I used the wash to highlight each bolt and any other details on the model. After the wash dried, I used the Q-tip to remove the excess. The only downside of using Q-tips is that a lot of fuss comes off, which is very annoying. Thank you. 
To increase the color variation in the paint job even more, I also used oil paints that I applied in dots to the model and blended them. To further emphasize details that stick out, like the bowls, I mixed a very light highlight shade for each base color and painted the sticking out details with it. After the base color was applied, I moved on to weathering. In the process I started with chipping. For chipping I mixed a light green tone and used a sponge to apply the chips where they appear the most. This includes especially the edges. After the sponge technique has formed the bases, I combine chips with a fine brush to larger paint chips. I also painted on scratches. At the Saint Chamon especially, this huge overhang front and rear always scrapes across the floor, which is why I especially painted scratches there. Then I painted dark steel chips into the light chips. It is important to paint the dark chips into the light chips and not paint over them, as this gives them a three-dimensional effect. After securing the chips with a layer of varnish again, I used a rusty animal wash to put a rusty filter over the chips. It was important to me not to achieve a rusted through effect, but only to apply a light rust filter. As a final step in creating chips, I sprayed on very fine light chips with a brush to represent small fresh chips of stones and shrapnel flying around. After that I was able to take care of the overly complex exhaust system. To achieve a heavily rusted effect, I wanted to use the hairspray method. First I sprayed a light grey as a base for the rust color. On this base I irregularly sprayed the curler burnt umber, which should be the base color for the rust effect. Then I sprayed on chipping medium from Vallejo, which is very thick and will later ensure that I can remove the following layers of paint. This was followed by two more coats of paint. First I sprayed on a grey and then a green base color. The grey layer under the green will make the chips look more three-dimensional and show more color variations. The 
Then, using water in a brush, I was able to peel off the top layers of paint. As mentioned earlier, there should be very little paint residue left on the heavily rusted exhaust system. To increase the color variations of the rust, I dabbed on dark brown to orange shades with a sponge. Unfortunately, almost all of the hairspray chipping effect was lost as a result. Since I was dissatisfied with this result, I decided to paint on color residues again by hand. For the resin light from the update set, there were of course no suitable clear parts, so I cut out a suitable round piece from a clear plastic packaging. Theoretically, you could certainly even use old transparent cheese packaging for this purpose. After I was done with the chipping I could take care of the underside in the dust and mud effects. I first sprayed the underside evenly with grey. To do so, I protected the previous work in a plastic bag. The first weathering step was to apply a dark wash to enhance the details and shadows. Then I started on the mud effects. To do this I first applied acrylic mud paste to the underside, then I added garden soil, stones and dried seagrass for additional texture. In that step it's only about creating the right texture. When applying the mud on the side of the tank, you must be careful to choose the right amount. The most difficult thing when applying the mud effects is not to overdo it and do it carefully. To create mud splashes, I strongly diluted the mud paste and splashed it on with the air from the airbrush. When wondering where to apply mud, it always helps to look at reference pictures. To give the dirt texture a dry dirt effect and the sides a dust effect, I paint them with a highly diluted mixture of Vallejo buff and thinner. Also here you must be very careful, because you can quickly overdo it. To increase the dust effect on the sides, I apply Amomic Rainmark effects and blend it vertically with animal thinner. To 
simulate fresh mud and dirt, which is wetter, I apply dark oil paints to the middle and thicker areas of the mud. As with the ships, the rule here is to place the wet mud in the middle of the dry mud and not paint over the pre-work. To increase the wet effects in some places, I used MIG wet effects. Because I found the wet effect too strong, I worked in light grey pigments to make some areas drier again and to increase the general color variance of the dirt. The tracks I first painted in mud colors, then applied mud paste and garden soil just like I did on the underside of the tank. Then I sprayed the dirt with buff again. It is important to ensure that you only spray the edges heavily, as this is where most of the dry mud sits. The mud is the wettest in the middle of the tracks, which is why I amplified this effect there too, with the wet effects from Amomic. After the tracks were attached, the basic model was complete and I began to add extra details from the update set. Then I started painting the storage set. I first laid the foundation for the glazing method by spraying the black painted storage part with white from above to bring out the highlights and shadows. Then I started to glaze the wooden parts. To do this I applied highly diluted paint in thin layers. As a result the shadows and highlights remained visible through the applied colors. For the wood I first painted it with buff and then painted dark wood components with wood grain. After that I painted strokes in light colors in the wood texture.
The metal barrel I glazed in grey and then chipped it using the same chipping techniques as on a tank hull. In order to paint the blankets, it is necessary to achieve particularly soft transitions when applying highlight shades. This means that highlight tones should stand out less strongly from the base color than with hard objects like wood boxes. The last step consisted of putting dust and dirt on the roof. I waited until the storage was in place to allow the weathering effects to better blend the tank and storage into one. For this I first sprinkled garden soil and seagrass again and fixed it with sand and ballast trees. In order to paint the dirt, I airbrushed buff and used oil paints again. Finally, I simulated a spot of an oily liquid by mixing oil paints with bad effects. And then I decided the model was finally finished. But before we get to the final result, I want to thank you for your attention and I hope you liked the video. I would be happy about any support for my channel in the form of likes, comments and subscriptions, so that I can continue to create more elaborate videos for you in the future. See you all, bye!